Hey friendlies, it's Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life back in the desert. Many of you know that my videos are on a delay because of safety and just logistics because I can't edit and travel and live at the same time. <laughs> Editing takes a lot of time and so my videos are always on a delay and I'm seeing a lot of people kind of confused about that. Most of you who have been following me for a while understand that my videos are on a delay. But before I talk about today's Nomads in Need update, which I want to do because I do still need some volunteers in some certain areas, so stay tuned for that. I thought I would talk about what it means to be a nomad right now. What is it like to be a full-time RVer with cities, towns, things closing down, and a lot of the things that are going on. And uh, in my first video, I said that we're probably better prepared for most people to live this way, but I do want to talk a little bit about how it is restricting me and how it is making me think about the ways I travel and the way I live. So stay tuned, we'll get to that next. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Okay, so what is it like to be a nomad right now when cities are closing down, we're worried that maybe state borders are closed down, we're worried that maybe there will be martial law. Uh, honestly, of course, it isn't that much different, but I am having to keep an eye on the news. I just need to make sure that I can get propane, I can get water, I can dump stations and RV parks are going to remain open, and of course, grocery stores and gas stations. So what that does mean for me, though, as a full-time RVer, and if you're a full-time van dweller, you live in a car, bus, whatever you live in, is I am thinking that it's probably a good idea to make sure your gas tank stays full, to make sure your propane stays full, to have a a um, reliable source for water and for dump stations. I think those are, no matter what happens, if we have full you know, if we're full on everything on board, we probably can do pretty well for at least a couple weeks. <laughs> I don't know. I'm starting to think that, you know, long-term um, disaster, you know, all you preppers out there, and I know I have some preppers, I'm starting to think about cashing gas, C-A-C-H-I-N-G, not cashing, but cashing gas and maybe even water. And I'm sure some of you preppers, I, you know what? I'd like to hear from you guys. I know I have a lot of preppers who watch. Are you caching gas? Have you? Is that kind of part of your prepping? And for those of you who don't know, prepping is is a short-term word or a short shortened word for people who are prep preparing for like an apocalypse. And they might have bunkers, they have food storage, but they're basically prepared for like worst case scenario. I think maybe it dates back into the 80s when we were all worried about nuclear war. What was that movie, The Day After? That was pretty scary. And uh, so preppers are people who just are, you know, they, they, they like to make sure they're prepared for whatever happens. The whole economy collapses, the world collapses, and, and they would be able to survive. So I like to hear from my prepper friends in... Uh, do you prep gas, cash gas, or do you not need to? What do you think about money? You know, these are the things that I have been thinking about a lot the last few years, and I'm, it, you know, thinking about it a lot now too. But uh, is money gonna matter? You know, worst case scenario, is money gonna matter? Leave your comments below. I want to hear from you. Let's talk about prepping and what that means. And um, but anyway, yeah, I start thinking. You know, do I need to get like a bunch of plastic barrels and just start burying? gas and water and money in the desert <laughs> you know is that crazy um i don't know preppers probably are shaking their head no no that's not crazy at all the rest of you are kind of like carolyn what are you smoking <laughs> right but um so other than making sure that i am I, I, you know, I've been kind of spending my time in, in one area in the Southwest and just kind of making sure I'm staying on top of store closures so that I know that I'm going to be able to get the things that I need to survive, the propane, the gas, the water, and groceries. And so far, I am fine. And that brings me to another thing that I'm thinking about in my RV life. I was going to go to California uh, in mid-May, and so my travel plans are changing. And I'm thinking that it's probably not a good idea, even if I can. It kind of depends, but I know that as of, I think, yesterday, the entire state went on lockdown. And I know a lot of other states are following. I think Nevada has been, um, at least in the big cities, Nevada and Reno, Arizona. I'm not sure what's going on in Arizona right now. Um, and New Mexico. I mean, I'm seeing where else? Ohio. I'm seeing state parks close all across the country, not only in California, but in some other states. So, and 
I'm, I'm trying to go by memory, so I could be wrong. It may not be Ohio. Don't ever take anything I say as um, gospel. Look it up. <laughs> Just, that's my that's my disclaimer um and so uh so yeah just make sure that if you are on the road just make sure that you stay in tune with what's going on in your community in your state the state that you are currently in any states that you think you might want to travel to to see what's going on and i said this before uh as far as being a nomad i think the part of being a successful nomad is learning how to be flexible and so my plans are changing i'm going to be moving soon the weather here sucks it's been and I shouldn't say that. It's been colder than I expect. Been a lot of rain, a lot of cold. I mean, I'm bundled up every day lately when I go outside. And I think I want some warmer weather. So I want to move on. And uh, was thinking about going to California. But those plans have changed. Because I don't think it's a good idea to go to California right now. With everything closed down. Even though the essential services will be open. But um, I think it's just a good idea to stay away. So uh, as far as being a nomad. Just making sure that I'm supplied up. I, I pretty much always have enough on board um, at least food and stuff that I can last a couple of weeks, but just making sure I stay topped off on stuff. So just in case everything does close down or, you know, stuff hits the fan that I can survive out here for two weeks. So I think that's basically it. I mean, I think you all, everybody who's been living out here a while, we kind of know how to get by for a couple of weeks. Most of us, I think, I don't know if you're living in a car, it might be kind of hard to get two weeks worth of food and stuff like that. But uh, my life wasn't, hasn't really changed that much as a nomad, um, except that, um, you know, had to, fa had to have friends bring me toilet paper from another state. <laughs> I did finally get some toilet paper thanks to some friends who actually found the last roll in the city they were in on their travels coming through. And so I did get some toilet paper and I'm rationing. It's another thing. Uh, you know, if you if you're if you can't find toilet paper, one of the things that you can do, and this is an old backpacking trip trick, is uh, use a pee rag. Backpackers use uh, female backpackers that I know use handkerchiefs, and uh, you just carry it on your belt loop when you're backpacking. And so you, there's no reason to, especially for number one, there's really no reason to use toilet paper. Just use a pee rag. You and rinse it out. It's not a big deal. It's just pee. It's not going to kill you. It's not like, um, you know, number two where you could actually get sick from it. Uh, pee, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's not that dangerous. So just use a pee rag and rinse it out. That way you're only using toilet paper for number two. And a lot of people are writing to me saying that even for number two, you know, they're just using rags or whatever and washing them out. Of course, as a nomad, water is an issue. Um, we we tend to want to um, ration our water, so I'm not going to do that for number two. <laughs> uh, also, for nomads, be very careful. You don't want to put um, handy wipes. You don't want to put... Um, uh, baby wipes or anything like that especially you don't want to put rags or anything like that none of that can go in your um black tank probably even if you're sticks in a bricks in sticks and bricks you probably don't want to be putting rags in your toilet anyway you probably don't uh but be careful as a, a, a full-time RVer about what you're putting in your black tank even the the wipes that say flushable are not flushable I would not put those in your black tank and um the other thing is uh, somebody just asked me recently, especially with the shortage of toilet paper, can you use regular toilet paper in your RV black tank? Yes, I've never used RV toilet paper. Just make sure you see the septic safe symbol on it. And um, and I don't put all my toilet paper down the toilet anyway. The, 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 the really not icky stuff, I usually just put in a bag and throw it away anyway. So I because it's just me and I try to ration my water so I don't want too much paper in my black tank so uh, you don't need RV black tank toilet paper for your RV I've never used it just septic sink toilet se septic safe toilet paper that's it okay so let's do a quick update right now on nomads in need which is a uh, basically just a little effort that I've put together to try to help people started off as nomads but basically it's anybody who is in need right now maybe because they have a weakened immune system or they're in the elderly category so they're in the higher risk category and can't get out or their income has been um, hurt and they are just scraping by it's kind of just become helping anybody who needs help and I'm in the process right now let me see where are we so we've got um to we're still kind of trying to put people together. I've matched one. Where are we? I have matched one, two, three, four. I've matched four 
uh, volunteers with people in need kind of still waiting for those to they're they're kind of working out the details of how to how to help them i have um now so far i have supplied groceries to just one person i said a couple last time but there's a couple there are i'm in the process right now of trying to get groceries to about three people trying to um purchase and deliver groceries and I'm having some challenges with that because I don't have volunteers in their area so I'm trying to find other ways to do that uh including like Walmart and Safeway which is really hard to do a, a, so it's really hard to do maybe you can help me with this maybe you know something I don't know I'm trying to do a Walmart delivery with a credit card from a different billing address and they're seeming to not like that so that's where I'm at but this is I still have a couple people in need so I have one person in McKinneville I think it's McKinville it seems like I wrote it wrong it seems like I had it but I think it's McKinville or Grand Ronde so I need someone who is in the Grand Ronde or McKinville Washington area I have someone who all she needs is her meds picked up in Grand Ronde and delivered to her in McKinville. And um, we can even give money for gas. So I, I'm, I reached out to a couple people in Portland. I haven't heard back from one and I just reached out to another this morning but it's kind of a three hour round trip drive from Portland so if there's anybody closer and you might be able to pick up meds and deliver them let me know again um, I will be asking for a driver's license and a picture just to verify who you are I still need somebody in Reno Nevada I need somebody in Hayville North Carolina I need somebody in San Diego uh, to deliver. I can buy groceries, but I need somebody to deliver them. So uh, let me know if you're in San Diego, California, Hayville, North Carolina, Reno, Nevada, McKinville or Grand Ronde. Oh, did I say Washington? I'm sorry. McKinneyville or Grand Ronde, Oregon, not Washington, Oregon, Grand Ronde, Oregon. Sorry about that. Okay, and I've got volunteers from, I wrote it down, 29 states. You guys are amazing. And Canada. So Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, California, Washington, D.C., Florida, Georgia, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Missouri, Maine, Maryland, Michigan, North Carolina, New Mexico, Nevada, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Rhode Island, South Carolina, South Dakota, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, Wyoming, and Canada. So if you are in need or you know somebody who might be in need in any of those areas, we have all kinds of help. So write to me again at... Um, at uh, Carolyn's RV Life at gmail.com. If you want to volunteer, put volunteer and the city state in the subject line. If you're in need, put need city state in the subject line. How y'all doing? How is everybody? Uh, so I put a suggestions out to the community to have into patrons earlier. Uh, I kind of think I want to do more videos and uh, just kind of what do you guys want? My people aren't watching uh, New Zealand. I know that my my hardcore audience is loving New Zealand, but nobody else is. <laughs> and I know that a lot of people are waiting until I get back to my RV videos, but um, I do want to get through the New Zealand footage because there are some people who are really interested in that. But what else do you want to hear about? Are there any questions you have for me about RV life? Is there any anything that you would like to see that I haven't done already. I kind of feel like I've done everything. And uh, let me know. Let me know what you want to see, what you want to know about. I also want to say thank you to those who have written to me telling me that the coronavirus videos that I did were helpful. And to those of you who tell me that I should stay in my lane and shut the hell up about stuff I don't know what I'm talking about, uh, I there are people, you know, you may not understand it, you may not accept it, you may not even believe it, but there are people who come to me because they trust me, and my, um, I just try to find accurate information and give it to people, and that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, okay, sure. That's, you know, I, I am, um, also expressing my opinion about things, but, oh, so, I have an opinion. <gasps> oh my god, I have an opinion. <laughs> 
<laughs> How dare I have an opinion? How dare Carolyn of Carolyn's RV Life have an opinion? But uh, let me know what you want. Uh, if there's anything that, you know, will help you just stay entertained or take your mind off things or not. If there's anything that you want me to try to help you research or whatever. I love research and I'd be happy to help you. All right. Thanks for hanging with me. If you want to volunteer, if you need help, contact me. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, be free, be kind, and help one another. All right.